Welcome everyone to our morning devotions for Thursday, August 22nd, <laughs> 2024. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know if this is going to work. My restream, which is how we go online, uh, crashed. So now I'm trying to record straight from the I think we're up and running with both. I don't know. Technology is absolutely not my thing. We're going with the vertical screen today because I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> I think we're up and running, though. It may just be me and the Lord today. I don't know. I don't know. The adventure continues. Amen. Uh, yeah, this morning it asked me to go ahead and uh, log in once again. And it looked like there was a shortcut. And I clicked on that one. And it wasn't a shortcut. It made things much worse. So, definitely a first world problem. Right? But it's still a problem. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lord. So, welcome. Uh, it says it's a slow connection now. I don't know. I don't know, everybody. We are not off to the rip-roaring start that I would like, but God is still on the throne, and He loves us all, and He's with us, and even if today's devotion doesn't come through, He's with us, and He's got us. So, what do we do here? We get into God's Word. Today we're going to be in Psalm 119, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and a memory verse from Matthew 5, verse 4. So welcome. Won't you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this brand new day. Lord, help us to be still in your presence. Help me to be still in your presence. Help us to cast all our cares upon you. For you surely love us. And thank you for this time. We love you. And we're listening, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I mean, to calm down, right? To be still in his presence. He's the one who restores our souls. He's the one that renews our spirits. His mercies are new every day. Jesus asks, says that we are to ask the Father to fill us with the Spirit. So, And the Spirit is afraid of nothing. The Spirit is a Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. It's a completely different way of entering into the day, and I'm, I'm convinced that if we give God time, the entire trajectory of the day is different. And not only are we at more at peace, we have more time for other people, and we bring glory to God's name, because only God can do this. This is not this is not something that we're able to achieve through human intellect or effort. No, this is supernatural. This is the Holy Spirit, God with us. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit that any of us is interested in doing these devotions in the first place. So thank you, Lord. All right, let's go ahead and get into our memory verse for today, Matthew 5, verse 4. It was really interesting because in, in looking at the other scriptures, this is the scripture that came to my mind. I'm like, I wonder if, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I wonder if we've done that this one recently. And I looked into my notes, and guess which is the only beatitude we haven't done in the last four months? This one. Matthew 5, verse 4. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's read it again. <laughs> Let's read it again. What do you see? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Show us, Father. We're listening. Blessed are those who mourn, for they should be comforted. You know, and what, um, as I was looking at the scripture earlier today, I think sometimes there's this temptation to think that, you know, if you're born again, you're always going to be just filled with joy and peace and, and uh, smooth sailing. You know, life is just very simple. And if you ever get down, if we ever get down or, or are struggling or are mourning, sad, afraid, you know, it's, it's, it's lack of faith. There's something wrong with our faith and we need to, well, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe sometimes, but I think this is just part of, this is part of life. It's part of living in this world. I mean, Jesus is the man of sorrows. I think he had a broken heart a lot of the time because people refused to surrender to him and follow him. And his heart encompasses all hearts. So if someone else was mourning, he was right there mourning. I mean, and the example that comes to my mind all the time is when he went to um, Lazarus' tomb. Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And before he brings him back to life, Jesus wept. He entered into the sorrow. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I mean, this is part of the abundant life. It's not... It's not that we're always joyful and peaceful and, and laughing and, and, and happy. So there's more of that as we learn to surrender our lives to the Lord. There's also more compassion for other people. That's the Holy Spirit within us. And we rejoice with those who rejoice and we mourn with those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And, and if you need further proof, <laughs> as though this verse isn't enough, the one right before it, the first two verses of the greatest sermon ever, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And where does the comfort come from? From our Heavenly Father, primarily. We call out to God you're going through a hard time, just keep calling out to God. He loves you. He loves you. And He's right there with you. You know, with the loss of loved ones. Sometimes the family will say, now, Pastor, we don't want this memorial service to to be anything other than a celebration of life. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, we're going to celebrate them, but we're also going to shed tears. Mourning is a good thing. It shows that you love someone. It shows that you, misses them, that you miss them. Tears are a good thing. If you feel like crying, cry. If you're going through a really hard time in your life, call out to God. 
If you're frustrated at the point of tears, let them come. And I don't really know where this, you know, you shouldn't feel this way comes from. You shouldn't feel this way. You shouldn't feel that. I mean, feelings are just feelings. You know, they, they come and they go, and we might be able to, you know, mitigate them some, at some level with self-control, but there's some really sorrowful things that are going on in the world and in our lives and in our families and at our work. And so if you have a heart for God and a heart for others, you're going to be mourning. There's a lot of sadness in this world. Jesus is the man of sorrows. And as we surrender our lives to him, he grows our hearts so that our hearts begin to encompass everyone. But the good news is, we're not going to be overwhelmed by the sorrow and the sadness. Because now our foundation is Christ Jesus. And he was able to enter into every situation knowing it would never overwhelm him. God was with him. So he didn't need to avoid these. He didn't need to avoid the, the pain and the sorrow and the brokenness. He could enter into it, the light, the light of the world enter into the sorrow and God would be there with him the Father would be there comforting him still the Holy Spirit and the same is true for us no matter what situation we walk into the Lord is with us blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted that's a wonderful promise isn't it well I, I'm afraid that if I start crying I'm never gonna stop you will you will I think sometimes it's it's like a pressure cooker. You know, you just need to let open up the valve and release the pressure. Just let the tears come. It's okay. You're not going to cry forever. The Lord is with you. And if you have sorrow in your heart, I think oftentimes that's a sign of something really good. Blessed are those who mourn, Jesus says, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, when I'm so poor in spirit that I cry out to God and ask for his help, he gives me the kingdom of heaven. Everything that I need. The problem is when we try to mourn on our own. We don't When we don't call out to the Lord. Or when we go to people maybe who say things like, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Okay, so now not only am I mourning, now I'm feeling guilty about mourning. Thanks for that. I think. I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> now I'm supposed to feel guilty about the tears? When maybe it's the other person who's uncomfortable with the tears. So they just want you to get over it because they don't know what to do with it. Well. Thank you, Lord, for well-intentioned friends and family members, but cry out to the Lord. He will bring comfort to you. He will bring peace to your soul. He will continue to give you his soft heart, his heart of flesh for other people, as opposed to a heart of stone. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Because not only will God comfort us, and does he does comfort us, but he also helps us to understand that uh, for all future mourning, for all future struggles. Don't be afraid of it. Enter into it with Holy Spirit power. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. You will be comforted. And you will comfort others in the comfort that you have received from God. You'll say things to them like, feel like crying, cry. Just, just cry. Jesus is right there with you. He loves you. Well, I don't feel comfortable crying around people. That's fine, then don't. And if people want to, you know, if people want to judge whether you are mourning properly or not, let them judge. Whatever. <laughs> Go into your room, close the door, 
and pour your heart out to the Heavenly Father. And if you feel like crying, cry. But you will be comforted. You will be strengthened. And you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You will walk through it with his help. You're not going to camp there. You're not going to stay there. You're walking through it. Because Jesus is with you. And we will fear no evil. Amen. All right, Psalm 119. And I'd like to look at verses 81 through 88 this morning. So Psalm 119, and uh, let's go 81 to 83, 84 to 86, and then 87 to 88. So 81 to 83. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. Yet I have not forgotten your statutes. Let's read this again. What do you sense the Lord showing you? My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. Yet I have not forgotten your statutes. Show us, Father, we're listening. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. There you go. There it is. Right there. Verse 81. <laughs> Our souls long to be saved, to be rescued, to be healed. That's our soul. The deepest part of who we are. I hope in your word. Exactly. You listen to Jesus. You read the Bible. You open God's word. And our souls are restored. I mean, that's why Jesus said to Martha, 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 you are worried and anxious about many things. But one thing is necessary. How many things are necessary? One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen what is best and will not be taken from her. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, quietly listening. There's only one necessary thing. For our souls to be restored and that is listening to Jesus listening to the word the Holy Spirit begins to set us free from things we don't even know are holding us back from chains we don't even know are there the sword of the Spirit starts breaking the chains that we don't even know are there yes it is all supernatural this is not a result of human intellect or human effort or striving my soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. Yep, that's the place to put your hope. I hope in your word. Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's how we come alive. That's how we are restored. That's how we are comforted, is through his word. I don't think any of us some of us are starting to understand the power of God's word, but we're just barely scratching the surface, friends. I mean, the power of his word. There's very little Satan can do or the demons can do against us when we're listening to our Heavenly Father. When our hope 
is in him when we wait on the Lord, when we listen to the Lord, when we call out to the Lord. And people will say, well, Jesus said, if you want to be great, you must be the servant of all. We should be serving. No, we listen first. We listen to him. I don't know where I'm supposed to serve. I listen to him. He calms me down. He powers me up. And then he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And he will lead me into a life of serving others. But the start is always listening to Jesus. And throughout the day, listening to him. Lord, I know you're with me. What do you want me to do? Fill me with your spirit. What do you want me to say to this person right now? Lord, I'm anxious right now. I don't even know why. Please help me. I hope in your word. And you know, I mean, that's why it's so great to be in God's word. You start learning his word more and more. And then the spirit reminds you of different scriptures. Even if you don't know where they are, you know the scripture, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, well, that means I'm just a sheep. Jesus is the shepherd. That means all the burden is on him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Yes. He makes me lie down. And God's provision is everywhere. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He helps us to be calm in the midst of a storm, even if a storm is raging. But last time, he'll calm the storm too. Still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is all his word. I will do all things through him who strengthens me. I've learned the secret. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. He is the bread of heaven. Everyone who comes to him will never be hungry again. I mean, you just go on and on and on. The word of God, the word of God, the word of God. Put your hope in his word. Verses 83 to 84. Uh, sorry, 84 to 86. Oh, well, before we move on, 83. I become like a wineskin in the smoke. I mean, that's got to be a way of curing the wineskin, right? <laughs> so they hang these wineskins up and then they smoke them. It's like, I can't see anything. I got smoke in my eyes. I'm drying out. I mean, what, what other analogies come to mind with that analogy? What other things can happen with a wineskin in smoke? Yet I've not forgotten your statutes. I just keep focusing on your word feel like I'm completely drying out. There's no hope for me. I can't see anything. My eyes are burning. I've become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I've not forgotten your statutes. You are with me. Behold, I'm with you to the end of the age. God's word, yes, Jesus, he is with me. I am not alone. The helper is with us. He brings Christ Jesus into our hearts, minds, and souls. The angels are here. Some have entertained angels unawares, Hebrew tells us. Hebrews tell us. Eighty-four and eighty-six. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. I love these verses. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. What do you see?
How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me! Exclamation point. You know what came to my mind with this? Is everything that's going on in the world today. It's like, how long, O oh Lord, is this going to continue? I mean, just all the evil. And, I mean, to me... It's all an attack upon God and God's created order. It's all demonic. It's satanic. How long, O oh Lord? How long is this going to continue? It seems like the people who are the most deceptive and the most evil are the most rewarded. And those who simply want to follow Jesus and, and love others and help others are, are laughed at and... And persecuted, and in many parts of the world, followers of Jesus absolutely are persecuted. But here in America, we're called right the bigots because we just won't go with what everybody else says. No, we're gonna we're gonna believe the word. We're gonna stay in the word. We're gonna believe the word. We're gonna teach the word of God. We're gonna submit to the word of God. And Satan is gonna come after us. And he's going to use the darkness in this world to try and get us to take our eyes off Jesus. I mean, that's that's what came to my mind when I read this. How long must your servant endure? How long, Lord? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me, for all of us. They do not live according to your law. I mean, it's God's world. It's his rules. And yet, the only ones who seem to be hated are the ones who are following his rules, his law. But I guess this isn't anything new. I mean, like Stephen said when he was about to be killed, he said, were there any prophets that your fathers did not persecute? And all the prophets were doing were trying to get people to come back to God, stop following the world, repent, Confess your sins and come back to God and obey Him. Listen to Him and obey Him. And they were persecuted, they were killed. And then Jesus, who's perfect, I mean, the darkness really rose up against Him to kill Him, not realizing that actually when He died, He was victorious over everything sin, death, and the devil. It is finished. Temple curtain is torn. We're already on the winning side. But it sure doesn't look like it when you look into the world. Amen. And that's what came to me. It's like, Lord, how much longer is this evil and this darkness going to be allowed to rule? Because it seems like it's everywhere. Financial stress on everyone. I believe that God has created his world with enough provision for all of us. We shouldn't have to be working 60 hours a week just to pay our bills. I think that people have been stealing from us forever. How long, O oh Lord? How long? And all the the evil that's coming over the television and, and, and social media on what life is about and what marriage is and what children are and right all, all just everything, everywhere you look. Man, that's what came to my mind. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those? who are defying you and persecuting those of us who are following you. All your commandments are sure. Verse 86, they persecute me with falsehood. falsehood. Help me. I love that. He just, he's like, help me, Lord. Help us. And I don't know if there's any other answer. We don't know how long. It may be the rest of our lives. Okay. Well then, help us, Lord. <laughs> every day, right? Help us. Faith, hope, and love abide, these three. Hope, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Lord and my Savior, my God and my Savior. Put your hope in God. Yes, Lord. I think that's the problem when we start asking how long, is there's no answer to that. We don't know how long. But again... If you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you're upset, let it out. <laughs> Talk to the Heavenly Father about it. Lord, how long? I do it a lot. I really do. 
<laughs> Lord Jesus, how long will this nonsense be allowed to continue? It's just, it's crushing people. But you know what? God brings good out of everything. So what have we learned over the last five years? I think we've learned that we're supposed to be together, that we are social beings, that we're supposed to help each other, not compete against each other. I think people are coming back to God in droves. I, I read, um, uh, Karen sent me a report the other day that said something like two-thirds of the mosques in Iran have closed because people are coming to Jesus Christ. They're done. They're done with these other religions. They just want Jesus. Praise be to God. I think there is something so massive happening behind the scenes. And my faith is in God. And I'm never going to give up hope. And one day at a time. But sometimes I get a little frustrated. <laughs> sometimes it's like, Lord, when is this going to end? When? Help me. Then verses 87 and 88. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. Let's read it again. What do you sense the Lord showing you? They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. What do you see? So was Father. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life. Let's read that again. In your steadfast love, give me life. That I may keep the testimonies of your mouth, the words that you speak, the word of God. My hope is in your word. Sitting at your feet, quietly listening. Yes, Lord. Because in the midst of the darkness of this world, the evil, where it seems that evil is thriving and righteousness is seemingly nowhere to be found. No, he's with us. He's with us. The goodness of God is all around. He is with us. The glory of God is here. People are beautiful. We're learning to help one another, to love one another, to care for one another. Everything is fine. If you need to let off some steam, let off some steam. Don't hold it in. Amen. Something's going to burst. We don't want that. <laughs> if you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like shouting, shout. If you feel like questioning God, Lord, how long? How long? When is this going to end? Then question him. Ask him. That's like David, right? In the Old Testament, he had a heart for God. When he was angry, he let God know. When he was frustrated, he let him know. When he was afraid, he let him know. When he was, when he was wondering how long, he let him know. He called out to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord. When he was afraid, he let him know. And here's one of the things that God really moved in my heart right now was, you know when, think back in your life, at the toughest times and how just going into those times there was that fear this I think this might overwhelm me I think this might I think it might break me and I don't know that even God can help me remember those times what happened God brought you through it <laughs> Or maybe he had to break you first so that you de completely depended upon him, put your faith in him and not yourself, and then he brought you through it. Maybe it was a time of going further into your relationship with your Heavenly Father than you ever went before. 
and he brought you through. And slowly but surely, the fears begin to subside. That voice, this is going to overwhelm me, is replaced with, God is here. He is with me. I will do all things through him who strengthens me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, right? The word of God begins to take over. And somewhere deep inside, the Holy Spirit confirms, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. God is with me. He has seen me through 100% of my toughest days, and he will see me through 100% of my toughest days. And when it is time for him to call me home, then the real celebration begins. Amen. But let me not walk in fear, not one moment. And if I am afraid, call out to God. Go directly to him. Don't hold on to it. Your father is with you. Talk to him. If you're frustrated, cry out to him. If you're afraid, cry out to him. If you're mourning, shed tears. He's with you. Your father is with you. It's okay. Shed the tears. God is building a beautiful heart in each one of us. Just know who the source is. Amen. In your steadfast love, give me life that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. I'm learning your word and I'm sharing your word with others. God is with you. Have you talked to the Heavenly Father? Have you prayed to Jesus? He is with you. And I'm here too. I'm walking alongside. I'm not going to leave you. I love you. Anything you need, you call me. I mean, talk to the Lord first, because he's the one, he's the only one that can calm down your heart, mind, and soul. If you need anything from me, don't hesitate to call. Because I love you, and we're family. We're part of God's family. Amen. Second Corinthians. And I'd like to look at verses 9 through 13. 9 and 10 we uh, looked at a couple days ago, but it continues the thought here. So let's just read this through one time. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also... No one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. What do you sense the Holy Spirit showing you? For who knows a person's thought except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Yep. The Holy Spirit is with us. And the Holy Spirit is gradual revelation of the glory of God and the plan that God has for each one of us. It's a gradual revelation. The Spirit is with us and he is revealing God's heart, God's mind to us as we are able to receive it. Which means more light, 
less darkness, less fear, less worry, more light, more power, more hope, more love, more strength, more courage. It's a gradual revelation. Verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. It's <laughs> freely given us. I don't need to hold on to my fear. I can give it to God. It's a free gift. It costs me nothing. Talk to the Heavenly Father. I'm afraid, Lord, of this situation. I'm giving, I am giving you my fear. Give me your peace. Give me your wisdom on what to do. And I'm not going to move until I sense your direction on this. I'm not seeking the wisdom of the world. I'm not looking to man. I'm coming straight to my Heavenly Father. It is freely given through the sacrifice of Jesus. We did nothing to make ourselves right with God. Jesus did everything. It's a free gift. That we might understand the things freely given us by God. Freely given us. Life. Eternal life. It's a gift. Our families. It's a gift. Our friends. Our work. It's a gift. Everything is grace. It's all gift. There's no more striving. We don't have to prove ourselves to anyone. And that's not that's like an that's not an arrogant thing. That's not an angry thing. That's a peace thing. It's like we're at peace. Therefore, since we we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Romans 5 1. Yes. We have peace, soul peace. God loves us. He is with us. The Spirit is with us. The one within us is greater than the one in the world. There is nothing in this world that will ever be able to crush us. We may get knocked down, but He picks us back up. It's all a free gift. And it's ours every day. And all the Lord asks is that we listen to Him. The earlier in the day, the better. Amen? <laughs> the earlier I listen to the Lord, the sooner He can start filling me with Holy Spirit power and peace and love and wisdom and grace and strength and patience. And the sooner the uh, temptations and the things Satan's using to mess with me, the sooner they have less and less power because I'm listening to my Heavenly Father now. And He's deceived by nothing that Satan throws at us. The Holy Spirit within us will guide us. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Yes. How long, O oh Lord, how long? We'll find out. Time will tell. <laughs> but we have today. Amen. We have today. Jesus is with us. Lord, renew my spirit right now. Remove all the fear, all the darkness. Help me to cast all my cares upon you. Fill me with your spirit. And let's get out there and shine the light. And let's help as many people, Lord, as you have for us to help. So what's your takeaway on this glorious day? Won't you join me in prayer? Father, thank you that all the most important things in life are free. Your love is completely free. Our salvation is free. This new life in Christ is free. Lord, help us to listen to you. Help us to learn your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit now. And Lord, make us hopeful for today. Faith, hope, and love abide. Help us to be hopeful, excited, because your miracles are all around us. You are guiding us, and you have a good, pleasing, perfect plan, and you're going to love a lot of people through us. Lord, let the evil one have no power over any of us today. May we shine your light like never before. Lord Jesus, we love you. We're following you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me, everyone. As I say, I hope that this uh, came across on YouTube and Facebook. It might have just been me and the Lord today, but uh, God bless you all. I love you all. We'll see you again tomorrow.